All right, are you finally ready? Are you finally ready to understand how to make golf simple and fun again? It's gonna be super easy, but it's gonna be weird. So bear with me as we go through this. I'm gonna teach you something that's very, very strange, but very, very effective, and it's one thing that you have to feel, one thing that you have to focus on, and it's gonna be incredibly easy. So, throw the club down. We're gonna come back to that in just a moment. What I want you to do first is just focus on one thing. And this one thing is the axiom. It is the thing that the pros are doing that nobody's really looked at. It's the thing that moves everything. And it's more importantly, it's a feeling that allows you to move your body correctly throughout the entire swing. But all you have to do is focus on your right foot. That seem weird, right? But your right foot, in the way that I'm gonna teach you to think about and feel what's going on there, will have this butterfly effect, and it'll move up your entire body by just focusing on your right foot, which doesn't move at all. It's even weirder, right? Bear with me. So, stand up, because you're gonna feel this. You're gonna to start to do this right away for yourself. So the right foot, here's what we're gonna do. All you're gonna do is you're gonna focus on moving pressure around the perimeter of your right foot. Now the direction is everything. Because as I told you before, the catch to golf is that we're moving in two different directions for most golfers. And I believe that the pros are more or less moving only in one direction. And that direction is clockwise for a right-handed golfer. And that's how I'm gonna describe this. So I'm gonna make this really simple. I'm not gonna say left versus right and all this stuff because it's gonna be much easier to understand if I explain it just from a right-handed perspective. So imagine there's a clock on the ground, 12 o'clock is in front of you, six o'clock is behind you. If you were to move your pressure around the perimeter of your right foot in a clockwise direction, that would be the only thing you have to understand to get the whole body to work correctly in the golf swing, literally. Pressure around the perimeter. So you're gonna to go to the outside of your foot, back to your heel, to the inside, to the ball of your foot, to the toes, and around. Just pressure. You're just focusing on shifting pressure. Your foot's not moving. Right? You can lift it up if you want to really exaggerate it, but what I really want to do is keep that foot planted and just see how easy it is to shift pressure in a clockwise direction around the perimeter of your right foot. Now, as I do this, my whole body's moving, right? And my head's not moving. This is mostly lower body stuff. Head's staying pretty quiet, but my legs and hips and everything are very relaxed. This is very, very important. Most golfers who swing over the top or really struggle swing very armsy, their legs and hips get really tight. So as you're doing this, you're going to do a little Elvis action. You're going to loosen up the pelvis. Elvis in the pelvis, right? So get those hips moving, your legs nice and relaxed shifting pressure around the perimeter of your foot. Now, as you do this, your ankle is moving in a little clockwise orbit, your knee is moving in a little clockwise orbit, and your hip moving a little bit more than your knee and your ankle is also moving in a clockwise orbit. That's the key. You can't be moving in two different directions in the golf swing. You can't go back in one direction and then down in another direction, clockwise going back, counterclockwise coming down, and expect to be very good at golf. The pros have realized or figured out through some way or another that if they just move in one direction, it's a heck of a lot simpler. And that direction is clockwise. Always shifting pressure in a clockwise direction. I call this the merry-go-round. You're just going around and around the merry-go-round on your right foot. You're only focusing on your right foot. You're only feeling pressure shift. There's no technical thoughts here. There's no mechanical things. You're only moving pressure in a clockwise direction around the perimeter of your right foot. So now you're thinking, oh, okay, Chuck, I get it. We're moving in this clockwise direction, but this kind of looks like a golf swing, but not really. Well, first of all, it's a big exaggeration. The important thing I want you to understand is the feeling of moving in a clockwise direction because most golfers have no inkling of that. It's somewhat clockwise going back and then very counterclockwise coming down. So this is going to be a very strange feeling. So you can just stay on the merry-go-round till you get the feeling and your hips start to gyrate and loosen up and your legs feel more relaxed. This is gonna help you move faster. So now, at some point though, we wanna get off the merry-go-round. And that's when we get our pressure onto our heel at six o'clock. And then as we go to seven o'clock, eight o'clock, we're now getting up onto our right big toe. And so as we do this, as we go around and get up onto the big toe, 
that's when we get off the merry-go-round. That's how we get off the merry-go-round is we go around and then until we get onto our big toe. And then all we need to do is come up under our big toe. And yes, it's okay for the right heel to come up in the air. These are all exaggerations right now. With a typical iron shot, it's gonna stay down like you see in most pros. But this feeling of learning how to go around the merry-go-round in a clockwise direction and then get off the merry-go-round by taking your right knee with your big toe and you're gonna use your big toe to point your right knee at about nine o'clock down the target line. From up the line, it's easy to see that my right knee is essentially replacing my left. It's moving it out of the way. So you know that in the downswing, your left hip's gotta get deeper. And this feeling of going around and clockwise helps get my right hip deeper. Then clamshell drill, you know, both hips attached to the chair. And then as I continue to go from six o'clock, seven o'clock up to the toe, then I move that right knee using my right big toe and that helps move everything out of the way and you can see I can easily maintain my posture easily increase my hip depth and make room for my arms which we'll talk about in just a second the key is that I'm only feeling my foot and I'm not trying to perfect this move I'm not saying okay I'm at one o'clock two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock five okay now go to toe it doesn't work like that it's pressure shift and this pressure shift happens very very fast in the swing and I'll show you with tour pro examples in, in the following videos but the idea is that this movement is very quick, very subtle, very simple, but it's the only thing you have to feel. If I can go around the merry-go-round and get off the merry-go-round, I'm starting to look like a golfer. And if I only have to feel this, I only have to master this instead of perfecting mechanical things, I can master a feeling, I can master a movement, and that movement is always in one direction, around the merry-go-round and then I get off. It's that simple, then all of a sudden, I have no more technical thoughts. There's no way to learn this through technical thoughts. It's a feeling that allows you to start to move your body like you see the pros on TV. Now let's put the arms in there. So now, how do we get the arms to work with this lower body movement? So while you're doing this, first of all, this is your throttle pedal. This is the engine of the swing. This is the only thing you focus on because your arms, as you're gonna see, are pretty darn irrelevant in a lot of ways. Now, of course, they have a job to do, but your focus is gonna be just on your right foot. And the only thing you have to master in your golf swing is moving pressure in a clockwise circle around the perimeter of your right foot. You can see how it's starting to look like a golf swing, all right? Can you do this? Of course you can, this is incredibly simple. It's getting you into the positions that the dead drill is teaching you, but through a feeling. But everything is exactly the same. The mechanics, the positions, all those things are the same. It's the feeling, the thing that your brain can latch onto, the feeling that you can focus on that creates all these positions that you see, but they happen as a result. You're not trying to make yourself get into a position and not knowing how you got there. You now have a feeling that will create those positions and that's all you have to feel. Now let's get the arms to work. The arms are incredibly simple. All I'm gonna have you do at first, right hand only. You're gonna start moving it. Guess what, what direction? Clockwise. I'm gonna start making a little windmill action. These are gonna be big exaggerations is to get the synchronicity of the arm movement and the lower body movement so you can feel what it feels like to swing like a tour pro for the first time and have timing and synchronicity instead of seeing it, knowing intellectually what it's supposed to be like but have no idea how to do it. So, remember the old right shoulder blade guide? It's been up for 15 years. This can help you initiate this movement, but guess what? It doesn't really matter where the hand goes in the takeaway or in the backswing, as long as the direction of movement is correct. And that direction of movement is what? Clockwise. So now, as I begin to, I'm going around the merry-go-round and you're starting to see that you should feel this, right? And don't try to do this super slow either. Get some rhythm to it, get some timing to it, because that's really the key. If you can focus on this perimeter movement of pressure around your foot, you can feel rhythmical, but you only have to feel rhythmical right here. And then your rest of your body is just gonna to respond to that. Your tempo is gonna be set by the engine in your swing. This is the gas pedal, just like the gas pedal in your car. You're focusing on your right foot. Your whole body moves as a result. It's the direction of movement that's key. And now as you continue to do this and you feel the rhythm of it, all of a sudden, even if you're a terrible dancer like me, I am a horrible dancer, so don't think you gotta have some great hip coordination. I am not a dancer, trust me. But I can start to get this feeling of my hand working in an exaggerated clockwise circle and the timing that I feel with my body. 
And this is where we start playing air guitar, all right? So I'm holding the neck of the guitar. I'm always on the merry-go-round. This is the engine of the swing. This can never stall out. This can never die. This is your focus. The arms are just going in a clockwise circle wherever they go. Don't worry about them for right now. So you're just going this way. I'm on the merry-go-round. And as I go to get off the merry-go-round, I strum and I'm, I'm the best air guitar in the world, right? I'm certain Van Halen is looking at this right now and saying, we need this guy, right? So this is the feeling. Now the timing of this, simple. Most golfers, their arms, hands, and club pull their bodies out of position during the backswing. And now that they're already out of position, then they, then they try to turn an, a different direction in the downswing and expect that to work out. Of course it doesn't work. But if you can get everything moving in one direction with a clockwise movement, now look what happens. As my hands go to the deepest part of my backswing in this clockwise circle, remember to turn, my hands go deep, where's my pressure? It's on my heel. My hands actually helped pull me into position instead of doing what they normally do, which is pull you out of position. So now as my hand is at the deepest point and begins to fall, What's happening to my pressure? Oh, look at this old squat to square happens naturally. As my pressure begins to move to the ball of my foot, my hands coming down shallow from the inside. And now as I go to get off the merry-go-round, my hand comes down perfectly into delivery position. As I do it from face on, you'll see as I go to get off the merry-go-round, because my elbow isn't going out like this, like it is for so many players, it's coming from the inside because it's moving clockwise. My hip has to get out of the way. That's why I gotta get off the merry-go-round. I gotta make room for another kid to get on the merry-go-round. We gotta make room for that right elbow to get in place here. That motion will make it literally impossible for you to ever swing over the top ever again. Because what are you doing when you swing over the top? You're moving counterclockwise. You're turning away from the ball, your instincts take over, your hit instinct takes over, and then you start moving counterclockwise. Your hand moves counterclockwise, right? Let's look at the old over the top move. In. Over, 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 all counterclockwise. It's the direction of movement that matters. Having two directions is twice as hard. You have one direction and it's the opposite of what you're doing right now. You bring the club back to the ball by moving clockwise, not counterclockwise. Now grab a club, feel the same thing. This is really cool because now you're gonna see that creating lag is like the dumbest, easiest thing in the world. You will never ever have to try and create lag in your swing. Because when you're losing lag, it's when you switch directions and start moving counterclockwise and every gets, everything gets thrown out that way. You're going the opposite direction. At first, when you do this, it's okay to exaggerate just right hand only, get some turn. You're turning around, you're all staying on the merry-go-round, getting off the merry-go-round, and your wrist is where the speed really comes from. So don't try to muscle it with your chest or your arm. There's no point in that. It's your wrist, almost as if you had a string with a rock on the end of it. And you're just slinging it around with your wrist and you're gonna sling that rock down there. Again, moving clockwise. So as I'm doing this, that's the feeling. It's not this, all right? So we're moving clockwise with our arm, getting off the merry-go-round. Does that look like a golf swing? Yes, I'm exaggerating the takeaway, but you can see as I do this, I've got a ton of speed all of a sudden just from this simple little clockwise movement. So now as you start to feel the whipping action, you can hear it, right? Clockwise, I'm on the merry-go-round, making room for my elbow. Go around the merry-go-round and get off. As long as both of these are moving clockwise together, you can see how all the magic starts to happen. I, as my elbow goes back, it naturally makes my right hip go deeper as my pressure goes to six o'clock on the heel. So now you know the clamshell drill, the dead drill. It's getting my hip deep and attached to that chair. It's making room for my arms. Now both hips attached to the chair. And then as I go get off the merry-go-round, I'm in this position and the club is naturally setting and maintaining lag. There's nothing here. There's no direction of movement that would cause me to cast the club. It's impossible. And it's literally the opposite of how you swing over the top. So not only can you not swing over the top, but you can't cast anymore either. If you follow this movement, the weight of the club, which is also moving clockwise, my right wrist, clockwise, as I do this, it sets my wrist. Now I got all this lag in the world. You're gonna see this in your own swing right away. And then all I gotta do is just let it go. Get off the merry-go-round. It's that simple. The direction of movement is the key. Your brain goes into the feeling of pressure around your foot. You start developing tempo and rhythm and synchronicity. 
When you feel your foot, this is such a simple thing. It couldn't be any smaller movement because the foot's literally not moving. It's staying on the ground. You're just feeling pressure moving in a specific direction and your arms are just going where the arms go. If you're a better player, you're not gonna have to exaggerate this arm movement in the big air guitar because your hands are probably already moving somewhat decent. Maybe they're not fully clockwise, but your hand circle is gonna be really small. Or you can still feel like, you know, Matthew Wolf. What does he do? He makes this huge clockwise circle. Tiger Woods, John Rahm, they're doing the same thing. It's just a much smaller clockwise circle. We'll look at that in the Tour Pro videos showing the Axiom movement in the other videos. But for you, the feeling is not what the arms do. The feeling is what the foot does. The timing, the speed, the pace. This you can feel really quick. You need to move quick in the swing. Your foot can move incredibly fast. You can move that pressure incredibly fast and get your swing to move very, very swiftly and get that speed that you know you're capable of, but you've been fighting it because you've been throwing the club away and moving counterclockwise. You can only move in one direction. When you follow the axiom, you're only moving clockwise and you release the club and it's simple. Your brain goes into your foot, your hands go where they go, your focus is on moving pressure around the perimeter of your foot, getting on that merry-go-round, staying on the merry-go-round, keeping it going, and getting off the merry-go-round. That you can handle. You can feel this simple movement. And as I show you in the follow-up videos that the Tour Pros are doing this exact same thing. It's been right in front of our faces this whole time. It's so simple to feel. It's so simple to understand. And now, when things go off in the middle of a round, when you're out on the range and you're not sure what you're doing, you're not hitting it great, what do you resort back to? The feeling of moving pressure around my foot. It looks like a golf swing because it is a golf swing. It is the golf swing. Moving in one direction will allow you to feel athletic again. It'll feel fluid. It'll feel like one motion. As you play this air guitar with some rhythm, you can see how it works. As my arm drops, my, it's natural for my hip and knee to get out of the way. It's a completely natural, athletic, fluid, dynamic movement. And that is what I'm so excited to share with you. Golf is simple again. One feeling, no mechanical thoughts. You can't learn this through mechanics. There's nothing mechanical for me to teach you. Now, as you go to put your left hand on the club, the swing will start to look a lot more conventional. You don't have to make this big Matthew Wolf exaggerated takeaway. That's just normal and it's easy to feel the synchronicity of the movement with the right arm and the right foot. But as you put your left hand on, the left arm's not gonna wanna do this crazy big move. So you're gonna start to notice that it's gonna start to look a lot more conventional. As you put them both together, this clockwise circle becomes a lot smaller. You don't have to do this crazy stuff. It's very small. The idea again is not the perfecting of the movement and the technique, excuse me, the perfecting of the technique and the, and the mechanics, it's the mastery of the move. When you feel this movement, when you feel how rhythmical and simple it is and how easy it is to keep the swing glued together, it all starts to click. So yeah, you don't have to make this big crazy move with your arms. Again, your arms are relatively unimportant. They're secondary, this is primary. Always keep the primary, focus on that right foot. It doesn't matter, again, if you want to be right-hand dominant, left-hand dominant. The movement is the same. The direction of movement is what matters. Golf can be simple again. You're moving in one direction. You're no longer trying to move in two different directions really quick. Imagine trying to get ready for a 100-meter dash, and the first thing you had to do was wind yourself up and then switch directions and go back. That's what you're asking yourself to do in the golf swing. Right? Run backwards really fast and then run forward really fast. It's crazy. Let's just move in one direction. So I'll move clockwise, we'll all be speaking the same language, and golf will be fun again. You'll have effortless speed, no mechanical thoughts. You have no mechanical thoughts to ever think about, no mechanical thoughts to ever resort back to. It's one simple feeling that you can master in your living room anytime and start to play the best golf of your life.